So often I get asked how I made my terrain look like the terrain of a short hike, and while this isn't going to be a tutorial on how shaders work, I can kind of run you through the steps it takes to take the uh, Unity basic terrain shader and kind of modify it to get the results you want. So first things first, I'm going to head to the Unity website, so where I can find all the downloads. I'm actually going to be using the built-in shaders from 2017, because I generally find that they're a bit easier to work with. In later versions they kind of hide the splat maps and um, there's stuff like terrain holes you have to deal with. So once we've downloaded the zip, we're going to want to go into it, going to default resources extra, then go to terrain shaders, and then go to splat. And here is where we'll find the actual terrain shaders. Um, with first pass and add pass, the first pass being the first four uh, terrain textures, and the add pass being every additional uh, four terrain shaders, which will become apparent uh, in a bit. We'll also want terrain splat map common from the CG includes folder. A CG include is basically just a way of sharing uh, code between shaders. So next in the Unity editor, I'll just rename my uh, shaders that I've downloaded as well as the CG include file. Um, in this case, I'll just uh, rename them to Toon Terrain Add and First for the first and add pass, and also rename the um, include file to just Toon Terrain. Uh, this is kind of important because um, the existing shaders are already in Unity, so if you don't rename them, you might have some conflict with them trying to use the existing shaders. So here in the actual files themselves, I'll kind of do the same thing. Anytime I reference the uh, common CG include, I'll just uh, replace it with a reference to my new CG include, and also change the name of the uh, shader itself, um, so we can reference that in, uh, in the other files. Mainly in the first shader is where you'll reference all your other shaders, so for example the add pass, as well as like um, if you wanted to add your own custom like detail or like tree shader. I actually kind of mess up here, I should have called it Toon Terrain Add, but I'll fix that in a, a later clip. So it's mainly just the two CG includes in the add and first pass, as well as the names of the shaders themselves, and the references to all of the other terrain parts in the uh, first shader. And now let's just create a material, and then we can just assign that to our terrain. And it should look roughly the same as your standard terrain. So in order to control the blending of our terrain, we're going to want to control what's known as a splat map. A splat map is basically a red, green, blue, alpha, uh, texture, which basically says which textures go where. So for example, this currently would be like a representation of our splat map with the a path going through, represented by the green colour, and the background terrain represented by the red colour. So the actual splat map mixing is done inside of the CG include file, because we can then share it between the add and the first pass. So it's done inside of this splat map mix function. And basically we get what's known as the control texture, which is the actual splat map texture. And from that we can calculate a uh, weight, which is basically how much of the, uh, the splat map control texture is actually filled. This is really useful for like the add pass, because with the add pass you're layering things on top, so you want to kind of have an alpha that lets you blend the two uh, together. We can also clip it based on weight, which basically uh, does like an early exit out of the function, so it's just a bit good for performance um, within the add pass. And then you can see later on we're basically um, looking at the red, green, blue channels and we're basically mixing in the colours of the actual textures dependent on um, how much of the red, green and blue and alpha channels are in the splat map control textures. So in between the uh, actual assigning the textures and processing the uh, splat map we can, we can basically insert our own function to modify the splat map control texture before it's actually used um, with blending anything. So to achieve the effect that we want, we basically want to look at our kind of smooth splat map, and for every uh, pixel we want to say, hey, which value here is the strongest, and we basically want to uh, set that particular channel to be 1, and the rest of the channels we want to set to 0. Unfortunately, Adam Grayu has um, made a lovely function that does just this. It takes advantage of the step function, which if you step x and y, you're basically asking, is y greater or equal to x? So in this case, we're looking at hey, if we take our R channel and we take away the rest of the channels, is the R channel still large? Is it greater or equal to uh, 
And if we do this for all of the channels, it basically um, will return us the channel that has, well, it'll basically set the channel that has the maximum value to one, and it will set the channels that are uh, smaller to uh, zero. So I've gone ahead and written in this function. I'm also calling in the splat map mix and overwriting my splat map control map uh, with the result of that function. And if we go back into our actual editor, we can see the results straight away. We've kind of gotten this smooth uh, transition from one texture to another, solely based on just changing the splat map. So the way the uh, first pass and the add pass works is the first pass is used for the first four textures because you can only have um, four channels in RGBA. And then additional um, textures are rendered with the add pass. So here, the dirt and the rock are used uh, using the first pass. And now this extra snow texture is using the um, add pass. And because I haven't modified that, it doesn't have the correct blending. I also made a mistake, which is why it's black. Um, so let's go and fix these uh, issues. So the first thing I can fix is that in my add pass, I accidentally named it incorrectly. Um, this is the name that's referenced in our first pass shader. I just hadn't added add to the end. So if you fix that, it'll actually turn white, which is what it was meant to be. Um, but you'll notice that the blending uh, isn't correct, and that's because um, we haven't used the right CG include. So I'll change that to my own CG include. And when we go back in, you'll notice it looks slightly better, but the blending still isn't correct. And this is because we, uh, we need to actually change the way that weight is blended. So previously I mentioned that the weight was basically like an alpha for the add pass. Um, so what we can do is we can basically step that like we did with the split map colors. Um, so if it's below a certain threshold, we'll just have it be zero. If it's above a certain threshold, we'll just have it be one. Um, so in this little uh, uh, section where we're only running this um, if it's the add pass, so if terrain is by add pass, um, we'll just have step the value. So. If it's uh, greater than 0.1, it'll be 1. If it's less, it'll, uh, it'll be 0. I'll just get rid of the mobile section just so we're still running this on mobile. And you'll notice here that the color is a, a bit off when we compile it. And this is basically um, just because we need to add an extra tag into the add shader um, just to set the blending mode. So we'll just add decal blend, um, and this will actually fix the, uh, the colors. So now we'll move on to the next feature, which is kind of the um, the vertical kind of cliff texturing. And for this, Adam suggests using the Kajiro's uh, triplanar mapping. And the bit we're really interested in is the bit in the surface shader that basically looks at the local coordinates and the local normal and is able to assign a texture based on that. So I'm going to start by just taking that uh, code from the surface function of the example and putting it into my first pass shader surface function. I'm going to get rid of some of the uh, stuff that we don't really need, like we don't really have a color for our material. Um, we don't really need a map scale, uh, a scale factor for our cliff texture currently. And I'm not really going to go into detail about how the triplanar mapping actually works. Um, there's lots of good examples online if you want to learn that stuff. Um, basically, it kind of looks at the dot product, and then it also looks at the local coordinates to try and figure out uh, how to apply a texture to each face. Um, we also going to we're going to run out of um, interpolators with the current shader model we're using. We could probably increase the shader model, but just to keep it simple, I'm just going to remove the um, the UV uh, interpolators. These are basically for the um, the UVs for like each uh, spot map, which is the actual text uh, terrain textures that are being applied. So fortunately, there's a way that Unity allows you to get the UV coordinates from uh, variables instead. So if you just uh, create a variable with the same name as your texture variable, but add underscore st at the end, and it'll actually autofill that with your, um, your UV coordinates, which is quite helpful. So this basically lets us um, move the uh, UV coordinates outside of the um, interpolators. And now we have uh, extra space, so we can use this for our uh, local uh, normal and our local coordinates. Um, so these are basically like your, your normal and your um, XYZ positions in uh, local space. So for example, if we rotated the terrain, it would mean that our calculations are still the same. And the way this basically works is that in your in your vertex uh, shader, you um, you pass uh, data you want into the structure where you store your interpolators. So you can basically put anything in there. And in the actual vertex function, uh, you get access to any any data that the um, the mesh passes in, which is in your app data full. So here we're just setting the uh, local normal in our interpolators to be the normal passed in by the mesh, uh, 
and we're also setting our coordinates to be the um, vertex position passed in by our mesh. So back in our first shader, we can just quickly change um, some of the things we still haven't changed, like we, we referenced before a main texture. Um, so let's quickly create a properties for a new texture, for the cliff texture. Uh, I'll just call it um, vertical texture, or vertical text. And basically whenever we create a property, uh, we also need to create a, um, a variable inside the actual shader code for it to be filled into. Um, so this is just creating the property at the moment. And I'm also going to need to change the references here to be referencing a vertical text instead of our main text. And I'll just switch it to be outputting the color of our uh, triplanar just to, for testing purposes. And you can see here I've actually made a mistake um, because in the... Uh, in the actual splat map mix where we were referencing those variables in our interpolators. So now I just need to replace them with the uh, ST versions that we've actually made. I'm just going to get rid of the um, the kind of define there because it, I, I don't really understand why it needs a separate thing for a, a standard version. Um, so I just need to, I need to basically rebind those uh, where, wherever it was using the interpolator variables. We now need to use our, our variables that we created um, to replace them. This is probably the more confusing part of the tutorial. Um, if, if this stuff is confusing, I re really recommend uh, a series by Freya Holmes. Um, I've linked that in the description if you're actually interested about how this stuff is, is working. She does a very good job of explaining it, interpolators and, um, and how the mesh data and the vertex and fragment parts of the shader work. Great, so now that's all done, and we should be mostly good. I still need to add in a reference to our properties, so I'll add a new sampler 2D. So basically, because I created the property and now I have a actual variable in my code, Unity will look to see if they have the same name and then it will autofill it with the actual uh, texture I supplied in the property. So great, now we can kind of see um, that this uh, triplanar mapping is being applied. Uh, unfortunately, it's kind of being applied um, on, on a bunch of different axes, so we, we're having a vertical applied with the horizontal at the same time. And I kind of just messed around to figure out how to fix this. I figured that I could just um, set the mappings to use the same uh, plane. So here I just set it to use the TZ plane, which is the um, X and Y local coordinates. And that basically means that it'll only apply on the, uh, on the vertical faces. So now we just need a way to blend between our uh, uh, vertical color and our terrain color. I'm going to use the dot product, which is kind of a way of, of looking at two vectors and seeing how far one is along the other one. Um, you can kind of think of it as if they're facing the same direction, you'll get one. If they're kind of at right angles, you'll get zero. And if they're facing opposite each other, you'll get minus one. So I'm going to use the local normal that we now have, and I'm going to use the upwards vector to kind of say, hey, how, how much are we pointing upwards? Um, and if we're pointing upwards a lot, so if we're greater than 0.8, which is almost uh, you know, directly the same, um, then we will use our terrain color that we uh, stored in our mixed diffuse. Um, otherwise, we'll uh, use the actual um, vertical color, so the texture that we just, uh, the color that we just created. And if we look at the terrain, we'll now see hopefully they all uh, blend nicely. Um, Obviously, if you wanted to, you could create a property for the exact uh, threshold in which it starts blending. The other thing that you'll notice is that our add pass doesn't have the same uh, effect. So we'll have to go into our add... Well, we'll basically have to copy the same uh, code of our surface shader and, uh, and change that. So now our add pass has the same kind of treatment applied to it, and you can see that the uh, the color of our, our add passes is clipped out by the um, the vertical color. <laughs> 
and I'm just going to add a quick uh, scalar for our cliff texture um, by doing the same thing with the ST to get the uh, the UV scales of um, our vertical texture. So I'll just use the X scale uh, in here. Uh, so ST and then the X part. And yeah, I'll just multiply all of the train arc, triplane arc coordinates better. And I need to do this for the add and first pass. I could probably um, take out the surface shader, uh, surface function, and put it into the uh, CG include. Which would probably make it a bit easier, seeing as the uh, code is the same. So now if we go into our material, we just change the tiling. We can see we've got like a, a bit of a, a nicer, not as kind of dense um, scaling. So that's the basics of how I created the terrain shader. There's a few more things you could do, like um, adding in custom lighting or custom uh, tune shading in. Um, you could also add in uh, new shaders for like terrain details and terrain grass, but I personally don't really use them. I just prefer to have objects in the scene. I'll leave a link to the finished uh, shaders and the CG include in the description. I'll also leave a link to um, some of Freya Holmes' explanations of all the shader stuff. Uh, it tends to be very long, but if you're interested in learning this stuff, it's a really good place to start, because a lot of this stuff can be super confusing uh, when, you're, when you're not too familiar with shaders. Alright, enjoy!